Hello, welcome to live.wicode.uk. This is the final um, episode in series three where we are preparing for the Edexcel GCSE Computer Science Paper 2. And this week we are looking at some example questions, six questions um, for the on screen Python test. So remember, there's six questions in each paper. And question six isn't necessarily the hardest, but it's the ones where you have the least help in terms of the code available. Um, so uh, the type of things that question six um, asks you to do is often um, processing data in a two-dimensional data structure, like a list or a list of records. Um, often you have to be able to write data to a file or read data from a file, and it might also involve some string formatting. So there are three examples. Um, it's quite hard for me to write stuff that accurately self-marks in a similar way to um, a question six, um, but hopefully it gives you some practice. Um, so the first one, which we'll go through together, um, gets you to draw a face. Um, you have to read some data from a file and um, process that data so that we can draw it with Turtle Graphics. So let's have a look at this one here. It says, a valid line of the text file starts with the word circle, so that's a valid line. Um, anything that does not start with the word circle is considered invalid and the program should display a message to say it's been ignored. For example, this hash here is ignored. It's an invalid shape. Um, this blank line is ignored um, and we don't try and draw it. But all of the others should be drawn. Like We've got a, um, a yellow circle, two scleras, the white part of the eye is called a sclera, two pupils um, and then a red mouth. OK, so we have a blank canvas. To start with, I'm going to make this full screen so that we can see what's going on. Um, and we need to read this data in and process it. So I would always look at the question paper whilst you're trying to do this. What does it say that we need to try and do? Um, amend the code to read the text file and display the circles and the messages shown above. OK, well, maybe we'll just have this full screen then. So first of all, we want to import turtle graphics so that we can um, display stuff on the screen. Um, we need to have at least one constant. So I think it makes sense to say the name of the file is shapes.txt. That's this file here. Um, great. Then we want to try and avoid using local variables. We want to, sorry, we want to avoid using global variables. We want to use local variables instead. We can't do that unless we have a subprogram. Um, so maybe we could have a subprogram that reads all of this into a data structure. So wouldn't it be nice if we could do something like load file? What do we want to load? We want to load the file that is specified by this constant here. Um, if we do that, we should probably save it somewhere. Um, so, uh, well, in fact, now let's just define something called load file. Uh, def load file. It needs the parameter of the file name. I know that that constant is um, globally accessible, but I'm still passing it in as a, as a parameter. It's still OK. Um, right, what do we want to do with it? Well, we're going to use a local variable here called file. We'll open that file. That's a parameter that we've received here. The argument is this constant value. Um, if we open it, we should probably remember to close it. Um, and we're supposed to use comments as we go. So let's put some comments in. Open file. Do we get, yeah, there we go. We've got some points for that. And we're supposed to have white space to separate things up. So once we open the file, read the whole file. Yes, we've got some white space. White jet space is just like splitting your code up into paragraphs. Um, how do we do that? So file.read, that'll read the whole thing as a, as a, string maybe we should split that up every time we have a, a new line constant um, so we get each line separately and we can store those into a list called lines then i guess we want to iterate through each line so lines is going to have first item in that list the second item etc we want to iterate through all of them we want to choose a sensible programming construct for that and i think a for loop would be sensible go through each line in the list. So for line in lines, what's lines? It's the list that we've read from the file. Line is a variable we're using to iterate through all of those lines. And I guess for now we can just print it to the screen so that we can see that we've displayed each one. 
Right, next, I would like to check and see if it contains circle. So let's split it, split the line into columns separated by commas. Um, okay, so line dot split. This time, instead of a new line constant, we want to split every time we have a comma because our text file is separated by commas, at least if it's a valid line, which means it starts with a circle. So let's say columns or parts, doesn't really matter, just parts of the line. Um, and then if the first part is equal to circle, that's our test to see if it's a valid line. So we'll just probably put a comment in, check if it's a valid shape, begins with the word circle. If it does, we want to draw it, draw the shape. Um, so uh, how can we do that? Well, we want to get the other parts, I guess. So we need to know what all of these things mean. Well, that's a color. That's the X and Y coordinates. And that is the radius. Does it say that in the question? I hope it does. If it doesn't, I need to change it so that it does say that properly because that's quite important information. Um, Maybe I need to add that into the question because I don't think I've put that in yet. Sorry about that. I'll add that in afterwards. Um, so X, Y and radius. Um, oops, read the code again. Uh, so let's get each of those. Local variables. X is going to be something. Y is going to be something. Color has to be something. And the radius That's how big the circle is. Okay, so the color is a string, so we can just go parts one. That's the next one along here. That's going to be parts one, parts two, parts three, and parts four, because this is parts zero. Okay, color equals parts one. Um, X is going to be an integer, so I'll have to convert parts two to an integer. Same kind of thing for the Y coordinate, and the same for the radius. Okay, now that we've got all of these, it would be great if we can draw a circle. So let's draw a circle with X and Y, um, maybe the color and the radius. Um, obviously, it doesn't know how to draw a circle yet because we haven't told it how to. Um, so let's define draw circle. So we'll make another sub program, the draw circle. And the the parameters that we receive should be the same as the arguments that you pass. So we need a parameter for the x coordinate, a parameter for the y coordinate, a parameter for the color. It doesn't matter what order you specify them in as long as they match when you are calling the function and when you are defining the function. I say function, um, I don't think this is going to return a value, so it should be a procedure, sorry. The radius. Okay. Um, what can we do? Well, let's make a local variable rather than a global variable. Um, we'll go inside the turtle module, create a turtle object. Um, t dot pen up to lift up the turtle. T dot go to to move somewhere. All of this is in the PLS. If you want to check, you've got a link here. Remember, in the exam, you get a digital copy and you get a printed copy. I like the digital copy because you can control F. And try and find everything that you need. Come on, there's the turtle graphics reference. You've got all of this to help you. Things like pen up, pen down, etc. Um, so where are we going? P X and P Y. Then we'll put the, t uh, the pen back down again. Um, we should probably set the color, shouldn't we? So T dot color, um, the parameter color. Notice the different spelling, American, because it's built into the implementation of the Python Turtle module, British, because I'm British and I've defined the, um, uh, the parameter to be called, uh, color spelt that way. And we should specify, oh no, we need to say the draw circle. Now there is a, um, a method that allows us to draw a circle. Uh, we can't specify X and Y coordinates, that's why we have to kind of teleport up here. But you can specify the radius. Um, so I think that might just work. It'll be slow, and you'll have all sorts of blobs in the way, um, and it doesn't fill it in, but we're not far off. I think if we say we want to begin filling in before we draw the circle, and 
um, end the fill afterwards and maybe speed up so that it does it really quickly. It's not bad. We've just got these nasty turtle shapes left over. So at the end, let's go t dot hide. I can never remember if there's an underscore in there. The turtle module is very inconsistent about whether it uses um, underscores sometimes. And um, we'll just check the PLS if we're not sure. All right, that looks pretty good. What haven't we done yet? Okay, so it hasn't detected invalid shapes. Um, let me just add a comment. Um, draw an individual circle and fill it in. Uh, so we have this validation here to check if it's valid, but we're not doing anything if it's not valid. So what does our program want it to do? Oh, where's it gone? Should go back. It should say invalid shape detected colon space and then this stuff here. Um, print invalid is it shape or circle? We'll soon see. And then it should say the line that we've read from the file. Oh, we've got 100%, so hopefully that is working. So top tips for a question six. Take your time. Use the PLS. Don't worry about implementing the whole thing because you can pick up some easy marks for things like constants and white space and comments. Um, do decompose first. Sometimes it's helpful just to put in the comments. It's called sub-goal labeling, where you're just writing comments for what you want to do and then implement it afterwards. Um, and then think very carefully about the data that you pass in as arguments and receive as parameters and then send back out as return values. Um, and just work through these examples. Remember, not everyone um, will be expected to uh, do all of question six. They're designed to be difficult. So don't panic. Do what you can. Take your time and all the very best for the exam. Thank you ever so much for your hard work. And yeah, I look forward to hearing how you get on. All the best. Bye bye.